Hello you evil geniuses and wrongdoers, my name is Chaos Mole and we are back with another deep dive video for Evil Genius 2 and this time we are taking a close look at science. Yes, it is time to talk about the science in Evil Genius 2 and how long it actually takes to research something, how you can speed it up and how you can make it as perfect as possible to push your world dominating schemes. Now. Before we do this, though, we have to establish a few ground rules. First things first, all the tests I made have been under perfect conditions. So when I tell you like how long it actually takes to research something in tier 2, tier 4, tier 5 or tier 1, then those are under perfect conditions. As we all know, when you are trying to dominate the world and building your layer, not everything is perfect, even if you are trying as hard as possible, and there might be power outages, there might be raids going on, you have to focus on something else in between, you don't have enough scientists, people die, hopefully not your people, and you cannot really stop that. So even if I give you a number and then you realize, hmm, mine took a little bit longer, yeah, it's probably because something happened which I didn't really could account for. I hope you uh, forgive that, right? That I cannot account for all the little things which might happen between the signs. But we are talking about things which are absolutely perfect. So that means you have enough science items, you have enough scientists ready, and you basically have shifts of minions working through the science without any interruptions. Those are basically the perfect numbers and that's what you want to work with and what will help you to just plan for your own science. And the next thing we have to establish and which is already interesting, whenever you're doing research, the research will tell you what kind of scientists you need and I was actually curious to see if maybe a biologist could do the work of a scientist you know, because they're technically also scientists. And the answer is no. All those scientists, minions, are independent. So whenever the game is telling you, you need a scientist, which you can see right here, then you need a scientist. When the game is telling you, you need a biologist, it doesn't help you that you get the quantum chemist. They cannot do the work. But that unfortunately also means the moment you are reaching tier 3 in your research, as you can see right here, you don't need the scientists anymore. They are useless. Like, if you are done with tier 1 and tier 2, you don't need them anymore. The good news is, at least the scientists can be reused in your base, in your control room, and when you need... Um, I haven't researched that yet. Well, wop wop wop. <laughs> no, when you need um, this one here, the computer console. Like you can set them on a computer console and then they can actually start to just get inter for you. So they are not completely useless, but they cannot do any research for you anymore. So keep that in mind. And the same goes, of course, for the biologist and then, well, okay, the, the quantum chemist. Um, when you are done with them, you are done with research, right? The next important thing would be the items, but before we talk about them, there is one last note regarding the scientists. Even though they are all independent in their research, they can support each other in training. So let's say you need another scientist, a biologist or quantum chemist can actually train them. I know that's a little bit weird, but it works. So let's say you want to speed up your scientist training and you only have biologists running around in your base, they can speed it up. They can help in the training. That is one of the odd ones a bit, because again, they cannot do the work for each other, but they can train each other to do the work. So it's like, huh? Okay. But back to the items. Now, as you can see here, I have built a lot of items in this laboratory and I was curious, is there a difference between the research speed? 
because the whiteboard is the cheapest item you can get and that only costs you 5,000. And the impact analyzer is one of the most expensive items, especially in tier one and tier two, and costs you 30,000 each. So my question was, of course, is an impact analyzer faster? Or if it, is it even slower? Well, the answer is neither. It's the same. Yep, you are getting the same speeds out of the impact analyzer when you research something as you get out of the whiteboard or even the data bank. Like, it's the same. It doesn't make any difference in your research, which is curious, especially with the difference in money. So it makes maybe sense, especially at the beginning that you want to research most of the whiteboard stuff because you can just go ham on buying the whiteboard items, whereas the impact analyzers, they are much more expensive. And there are also not that many impact analyzers items you can research in comparison to the whiteboard. When you are looking down in your research, like you will see that a lot of the research nodes in tier one and tier two who need the whiteboard don't really have like the impact analyzer, right? Like this one has, and I know that also the weapons have like in, uh, impact analyzers, but then the rest again has whiteboards, right? So it's like, whoa, what? The, the question is here really, do you need that many impact analyzers and do you just take the hit for your research? And to answer the question, well, it depends on your money. If you have a lot of money and you just want to do it quick, you can of course buy multiple impact analyzers. But if you need money, maybe one or two impact analyzers are completely enough for the research you're doing with it. Like it really comes down to how much money do you have in your vault? And that is a question I unfortunately cannot answer for you. You have to look that up for yourself and you have to see for yourself like how it works. Now, let's talk about the most important question here. How long does it take to do research, right? Like, how long does it take to research a tier one item or a tier two item? And it's rather interesting. So if you have just one item and you have the one time research speed without any buffs, Right? I'm not talking about the Zalika buff. I'm not talking about like some items you have found on the world map or other things. Those are the raw numbers I'm giving you. So let's say we would unlock the computer console, which is a tier one item. It would take with one whiteboard 16 minutes. That's how long it takes. 16 minutes. With four whiteboards, well, you probably already guessed it, it would take you four minutes. And then with more whiteboards, it would be even less. And the same goes for the impact analyzer or the database. Like as I said, it doesn't make a difference on where you research like tier one items. It does make a difference if it is a tier one item or if it is a tier two research item you do. Let's say you want to go down this line and you are done with the computer console and you want to upgrade the criminal networks. Now this takes your whiteboards again, but it is a tier two research item. How long does it, uh, how long does it take? Well, the answer is 32 minutes. It's doubled. Yep. Not only the cost is doubled, from 10,000 to 20,000, but also the research time. And that means with four whiteboards, well, when it is doubled, you guessed it, eight minutes. Now, there is something interesting here. And this was the curious one. How much do you think that the tier three increase? Did it double again? No. Interestingly enough, they're actually not doubling the numbers. I was 
believing that this is the case because I was doing the test from tier 1 to tier 2. But the reality is, even though the money doubles again, the research time doesn't. They actually just add another 16 minutes to the clock. That's what they are doing. So it's basically 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 for team tier 5. So that means tier 2 is 32 minutes, tier 3 is 48 minutes, tier 4 is 64 minutes, and tier 5 is 80 minutes with one item. Yup, that's how it works. So keep that in mind whenever you do research, and then of course means the deeper you're getting into your research tree, the more items you want. So you need actually a good amount of space in your in your laboratory. Or well, you have multiple ones, of course. So keep that in mind when you do research. Yep, those are the times. But we are not done here. Oh no, we have like a few other things we have to talk about. The next big thing is how much actually does it take in smarts to push the research? As you might have noticed, um, your scientists start out with 50 smarts and then when they are doing the research, they slowly reduce those smarts, as this guy does right now here. How does this work? Well, to fill up the smarts, your scientists need food. So what you should do is, you should have some food areas next to your science area because you want them to fill up quickly and also give them some beds so that they can sleep that's what they need and then they can go back to work but the really interesting part here is that they are not depleting all their smarts before they actually grab something to eat because they are lazy and they stop to do research when they reach 20 smarts they're not going lower the moment they reach 20 smarts, they're like, all right, break time, and they're gone. So keep that in mind for your research. Um, I have done some tests, and it seems like that, depending on a few factors, one scientist, at least on a tier one item, can push... Um, the research by about 16% before they have to grab something to eat. Like again, with um, with multiple research items and so on and so forth, there will be different numbers. But yeah, they need smarts and they stop when they reach 20. Like they will leave immediately and you should have at least double the amount of minions. So let's say you have four whiteboards and you have four scientists you should have eight, and I would even go so far to say you should have at least ten. Because there's always a scientist still eating. Sometimes they have already lost their stats because they did something else. Uh, sometimes they are somewhere completely else. Like, you can see that right here. We have a minion right here. Yes, he needs something to eat. That's fine. But he will eat over here. Because apparently he didn't get a room in this area. So that means when he is up for the job, he has to run the whole way up to your laboratory. So make sure that you always have the necessities nearby for the scientists, which is food and sleeping room. And so you can get like the optimum way of just doing your research. But yeah, that's all you have to know about the research how long it takes and how long you can now calculate to uh, do your research. It's 60 minutes and then it adds for every tier plus 16 plus 16 plus 16 and the more items you have the quicker it goes. Yeah, it's actually pretty simple when you think about it. I hope it helped you to understand how science works. Um, there will be more videos of Eva Genius 2 in the future where we take some deep dives. Um, it will take a little bit because <laughs> the game doesn't make it easy to find all those things. 
like I literally have to sit here sometimes for hours to do all the calculations and whatnot. So please bear with me. Uh, the Evil Genius 2 videos will be a little bit slower. But if you need more Evil Genius 2 in your life or you just want to check me out streaming live, uh, we are streaming from Monday to Friday starting at 8 a.m. ET, which is 1 p.m. UK time. And that is 2 p.m. Central European time. And we're streaming a lot of games on trovo.live slash chaosmod. You find the link down below in the subscription. Uh, description. Close, but not the same. And yeah, if you want to stop by, just to say hi, watch a little bit of Evil Genius 2, or see me playing a lot of other games, like I'm definitely what you would call a variety streamer. Uh, you should definitely check us out because we have a pretty big community. Um, still welcome and very chill. It's, it's not a hype community, I can tell you that. And thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like or to dislike if you didn't like it. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe. I would appreciate that as well. And don't forget to click on the bell icon if you want to get too informed when a new video is up. Because apparently subscribing doesn't do enough for YouTube. So I would appreciate that as well. With that said, stay safe. And most importantly, stay evil.